welcome to Kali Trivium Podcast. This time around, we'll talk about atheism. Now, by atheism, we'll try to uh, pinpoint uh, something that is nowadays not so much uh, focused upon. Uh, but bo- by both atheists, actual atheists, or enemies of atheism. We'll talk about atheism, what I would call atheism in a classical sense. Uh, to explain what I mean, I'll first define uh, atheism in non-classical sense, something that I don't really consider to be atheism, not worthy of the name, so to speak. And this is uh, what is colloquially understood as quote-unquote new atheism. For those who don't know, uh, this is atheism of the sorts uh, you can find in people like uh, Christopher or is it Charles Dawkins uh, and his ilk. And uh, this is uh, the most frequent uh, form of so-called atheism that you run into online, which is interesting, peculiarity. Uh, A reason why I don't consider this atheism at all uh, is not because those people secretly believe in God. I don't think... uh, The reason is that I don't think uh, they uh, are up to the task. That is to say, they are not really confronting the reality of not only God, but everything that uh, comes uh, with uh, with the faith in God, or even realization in, of the existence of God. Uh, something that, in contrast to them, their predecessors, in using the name atheism, but not predecessor in genetic sense, uh, understood quite well. So by atheist, I would understand somebody like Nietzsche, for instance, or Marx, or Freud, or Democritus and Leukippus, the Greek materialists or atomists, Epicurus even. Although Epicur is rather close in, in, uh, in nature with this new atheist, but not as close as it may seem at first glance. Uh, namely, atheism is a metaphysics that is built upon the premise that at the center of all there is nothing. This is atheism. The atheism, so called, that does not uh, grasp this is not atheism in a proper sense for a simple reason that it cannot uh, reach uh, its uh, necessary standpoint and uh, I would say um, its proper mentality. And by mentality, I think I consider uh, the attitude of nowhere, attitude in the ontological sense, where when you take it, uh, your whole existence is modeled upon it. And even ages can have mentalities and peoples can have mentalities. But uh, originally and uh, um, most, uh, let's say, uh, eminently individual persons have mentalities. At new artists just don't reach this. They they are not mature atheists. That is to say, they are not attacking the problem. They are uh, believing. They are attacking. The reason for this is, uh, let's try to explain, uh, that atheism is in its essence a negative stance. Atheism is not affirmative stance. So it is the stance or attitude where you negate something as illusory. In this case, you negate uh, the existence of the first, of the origin with big O, in the widest possible sense. Although 
most of what we know as atheism was in fact uh, an attempt to prove that there is a no creator and this is strictly anti-Christian atheism and most, as I said, most of atheism we have to deal with is anti-Christian because most atheists are in fact lapsed Christians, that is to say they belong to Christian European civilization but they come from the ilk that rejected this Christianity, rejected it in its essence, but not in its form. Uh, because uh, willy-nilly they use Christian Christian terms and they use, uh, let's say, metaphysics uh, that was developed uh, by Christianity and tried to invert it. Something that is very obvious in people like Marx, for instance, but We'll come to that. Uh, now, this idea that atheism is a negative stance, which is, I don't think, assailable, uh, comes with a package, that is to say, a luggage, that is also very interesting. This means that atheism is not an original stance. It's not the first stance you can get, because you cannot start from negation. This is very important. Even in the acme of theological anti-atheist thinking, let's call it apophatic theology, uh, you have to uh, have a presumption that you started with uh, cataphatic theology, that you first uh, developed all the affirmations you can have of God before you start to indulge negations when you go into negative theology, because affirmation is naturally prior to negation. And this is very important, and this is something we today tend to forget, uh, because a, a lot of, not of most of modern and postmodern culture is built upon the negation. It is built upon the assumption of the original negation, not original affirmation, which is very, very important thing. And like all important things that are at bedrock of something, it tends to get neglected intellectually. So in order to be an atheist, you have to know theism. You know, you have to know what being taste means. And now I'll qualify it once more. Taste is uh, artist and taste, especially taste, is a word, expression, that I use uh, only for convenience purposes, uh, but uh, for me it is completely meaningless. From what I gathered uh, uh, from this uh, internet uh, circuit, taste is a kind of guy who argues for the existence of God. It is not the guy who believes in God or who has some kind of insight into metaphysical origins. Uh, by insight I mean some kind of knowledge, for instance, of his own ignorance or something like that. Uh, taste has no existential meaning. Uh, being a taste, I, I saw people uh, being defined as tastes Becoming atheists, then turning back to being theists, then converting to some kind, some form of original church, whether Catholic or Orthodox, and then changing stances, uh, changing changing confessions or uh, subdivisions inside that confession uh, with no problem, just because uh, from from this new stance they get or new confession they start to profess. They have, they think better arguments. This is meaningless. This is, uh, this is playing, being religious. This is, this is a game. Because once you are, once you belong to, to a religion, to just change it is, is not, not such an easy thing. Because to shed, we are not snakes. We don't shed our skin every year. Shedding of skin. Is something that requires a sharp knife when a human being is concerned, and uh, the changing of one's confession, if if he holds it in a true sense of the word, is quite akin to stripping of his skin. So just to note this, uh, not to think that I somehow consider, for instance, internet taste, that taste, 
that is taste new art taste uh, arguments to be in any way important for the problem of atheism. Uh, I'm using term only for convenience. Uh, well, the thing is uh, that uh, the stance of existence of God, uh, the metaphysics, uh, metaphysical mentality that uh, relies on this, is the original original human stance. And it can be, it can have different forms depending on the one hand on culture, on the other hand, on the degree uh, God himself uh, was having dealings with certain peoples. Uh, for instance, it's quite different to believe in Aztec uh, sun god or in Yehua, Yahweh, uh, Jehovah, as you say in English, or the god of Isaac, Abraham, Israel, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is not the same thing, obviously. Yet, as a stance, as a necessary stance, it is because even the one who believes in something that Christian would uh, rightly define as demon rather than God, uh, did not simply try to invent God, as the anthropologist would like you to believe, uh, but uh, simply uh, has to have some form of piety or some form of relation towards what is what transcends him, because it is natural, obviously natural for humans to have something like this, uh, but has it in, in, in quite perverted form. Now, atheism is a stance that tries to, to destroy this, to prove to man that this metaphysical center in all its forms is wrong, that it is the result of illusion. And in order to do that, and this is the most important thing, atheism intellectually has to cor correspond to the depth of religious, uh, religious reality or metaphysics, religious metaphysics. And old metaphysics was always religious metaphysics, of course. It had always God in the center, uh, whether in ancient world or in Middle Ages. So... Uh, godless metaphysics, at least in the West, is uh, quite a novelty, 18th, 17th to 18th century novelty. Uh, uh, atheist has to correspond to challenge. And people, atheists who corresponded to this challenge were people of the ilk of Friedrich Nietzsche, for instance. And I illustrate what this means. Nietzsche understood that center doesn't hold and his interpretation was that center was all for all our history especially the history of europe the center was an illusion in fact but in order to assume this uh, he didn't assume it he thought he discovered it and in order to discover something like this you have to go into center itself, obviously. So you have to be able to understand where theology comes from, where faith comes from, where, for instance, Christianity comes from, where Platonism comes from. You have to understand the thing that you try to destroy, that is to say, or Nietzsche would rather say, try to denounce. And this is something these new so-called atheists don't understand because Richard is not Christopher, it's Richard Dawkins. Uh, and such are uh, people who are uh, still on the level of late 19th century British radical liberals like Charles Bradlaugh or, interestingly enough, his uh, partner, platonic partner, uh, Annie Besant, the successor to Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, uh, the chair of uh, theos international theosophy, who wore these original new atheists, this very typical atheist stance they had that was non-metaphysical, that was not up to this challenge, 
that was more like built on the notion of common sense that is peculiar for English culture, for not for other cultures, maybe American that is derived partly from English, but it's not something that, that German would call common sense or Slavs would call common sense or even French. But this is something different. This is non-intellectual in the sense that it does not, uh, does not try to apply any kind of deeper thinking, critical thinking to, to, let's call it phenomenon of religion or, or phenomenon of metaphysics, uh, but just, uh, just throws it in the dustbin for pragmatic reasons, because if it doesn't work, it doesn't exist. They have an idea how religion should work. So, for instance, God should be, if there is a God, we all should have ice cream when we want it or such things. And I'm not, I'm only paraphrasing some of the actual arguments of these people uh, without realizing that there is very rare thing that uh, the, uh, that you encounter the religion that is so perverted uh, that its main tenets are one of its main tenets is that God should provide you with something just because you are. This is not something that that you have in a religion, because religious need is not the need for happiness in material sense. And these people, being liberals, uh, consider that this is the end of human life, materially based happiness, and that God is the one who should provide this. If He doesn't provide it, therefore He doesn't exist. This is not the case. Uh, religion is always com- religion always comes from quite deeper uh, deeper recesses of human being. Uh, religion has to do with salvation, even when when this salvation is understood as something like uh, uh, God providing rain from the for the crops. Because uh, God providing rain for the crops is not individualistic uh, pursuit of happiness, uh, but uh, a plea for survival of the whole people, for instance. This is quite a different thing. And uh, this is something that is prevalent among human societies from their beginnings. Now you have the school of thought, of course, everybody knows about it, positivist or functionalist. I'm thinking about, for instance, Emile Dirkheim in France, Auguste Comte, before him, and such people who practically created sociology. They, an anthropological, in some anthropological musings, uh, at the beginning of 20th century, where this was understood as a, as a typical form of primitive society, then, then later develops into scientific society where uh, science uh, assumes the function of, function of religion. This is wrong in, in its own way and superficial in its own way, but it's still deeper than this uh, new atheism because new atheism doesn't take into consideration uh, anything except the present of the individual indulging in new atheism. I'll give you an example. I, I think I remember Dawkins put forward uh, the argument that some primitive tribe uh, uh, has a village near the river where crocodiles eat people, so they start to pray to crocodiles and this or that. Uh, I don't remember how it went, but uh, I know that uh, it was a thought experiment, because people like this always do thought experiments because they don't deal with reality. They are dealing with their own imagination. Uh, if, If you have a big river, uh, there are always places with no crocodiles, no no people, no matter how savage, is so stupid to uh, not realize causal connection between crocodile and being eaten. They build their village elsewhere. I mean, this is, even those primitive religions have more depth. But this is also, I think, a colonial way of thinking, very, uh, supposedly very unpopular now with this Black Lives Matter idiots and such, but still working uh, this is this is the kind of thinking where you uh, take your own cultural idiosyncrasies and hypostasize them as uh, the 
guidelines of human intellect in general for all people. So this is very much a foot with these so-called liberals. But that's a subject in itself. What I want to show here is that atheism requires much more. It requires much more depth. And this depth was achieved, I think, uh, uniquely by Friedrich Nietzsche. He paid the price uh, for it. And you have to pay price for it. God, <laughs> God is not to be uh, uh, joked with. And Nietzsche is a very good example of somebody who uh, who went uh, the whole the whole down the line uh, to be a prophet of nihilism, the prophet of absence of God, uh, with assumption that. Absence means that there most certainly is no God, and he lived according to this choice, to this insight that I consider wrong, but I don't consider shallow. Although a lot of Nietzsche's cultural critique and a lot of Nietzsche's uh, analysis of culture I find very superficial and his epigrams that are considered to be ultimate in wisdom and style of writing, I don't consider that that interesting or even aesthetically pleasing. But I read Tas spoke Zarathustra, and when you read that book, you see that this man is drawing from deep sources. He's not shallow, and not being shallow, he pays the price. There is some uh, there is some weight to what he says. Also, Marx was a genuine artist, and uh, Mark, what Marx did was uh, with after uh, after um, a lot of those uh, predecessors of his in in all the contemporaries in in the left Hegelian movement is genuinely to take religion and invert it. Because he understood that the religion is positive phenomenon in the sense that it is a reality that you cannot just be astonished over the fact that people believe in God. There is nothing astonishing for Marx, nothing astonishing in it. It's an ideology. So destroy the ideology. Put the inverted world from its head back on its feet. That is to say, a communist, communist, uh, socialist paradise, working man's paradise, where man will produce his own essence through creative work, through praxis. We all know how that ended up, but it's, uh, uh, what I want to say, it's a significant <clears throat> uh, intellectual stance, stance built, built on reality, whereas new atheism is not built on reality, it is built on, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on uh, Adolescent imagination. And to conclude this podcast, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one illustration from what I mean. Uh, when you see this expression, flying spaghetti monster, when they say that God is something akin to this, this just shows you how immature those people are. Because a notion of God is never something from the cartoon. There were no cartoons uh, in primordial jungles, for instance. Uh, Aztec, uh, Mexican, ancient Mexican gods were not nothing like that. They had more subtlety. They were anthropomorphic deities, but they had these uh, as all deities. They, there was uh, a certain, there were certain, uh, certain givens, as for instance, eternity, uh, as for instance, power over elements and such things that are not cartoonish like this. Because the notion, uh, having the notion of God, uh, having the notion of origin, it, it is not always personal or understood as personal origin, although I think it should be understood as such, uh, is already something that transcends imagination. It has to be expressed in, in, imagin in, in images. And in, even in Christianity, it is expressed in images because we have to use images. But in primitive, more primitive religions, images prevail over substance that is contained therein. Uh, when you have flying sp spaghetti monster, this means that you, uh, would want to have some kind of 
<laughs> monster, benevolent monster over you. Because uh, uh, that's what you learned from your favorite cartoons and such. This notion is tenable only after 1990s. I don't know where they get this from, Beavis and Butthead cartoons or something like that. It has no, what I want to say, it has no historical sense. And it is something that is very peculiar for this, especially for this internet generation, where people don't have sense of continuity in history. They don't, and correspondingly, they don't have a sense of the past, and even more correspondingly, they don't have a sense of heaviness of things, of weight of things, of how profound things are, how recent we all are, how conditioned by our past we all are. But they just play around with images, with notions, and this is very insulting, because... Uh, for instance, somebody like me can have an argument with somebody like, I wouldn't say Nietzsche himself, but Nietzsche, somebody who has this atheism, deep decision, deliberation to atheism. There are not many such people, you know, but discussion with somebody like that is like Faustian discussion. It is discussion where there is a deep understanding and deep aversion, deep enmity. But both interlocutors stake their existence on this ex uh, uh, discussion, while somebody like Dawkins and this new artist is merely annoying. <laughs> Although one could not uh, underestimate their influence because universities are invaded by such people and they are very difficult to argue with, not because they are smart, but because they don't live up to the standard of argument. The people most difficult to argue with are little children. And you can say, even in these modern times, that little child is wiser than old man. This is this new notion, maybe, of this uh, supremacy of child, which is completely nonsensical and non-historical. But when child poses you a question... What is this? Why is that? It never knows how to stop asking questions. And real intellectuality is built upon ability to stop asking questions, not to continue ad infinitum, in infinity. Children can understand that because they are immature. And when you discuss uh, with children some philosophical matter, you will be refuted by de their inability to gain common ground with you. This is intellectual life. Intellectual life is not life of combat. There has to be always agreement and congeniality even in opponents in order to have intellectual life or inter even intellectual clash. But of course, this is something you will not be able to explain to children. And this is, uh, this is what I meant by new atheism, not really being an atheism, not living up to its definition. Uh, hope you found this interesting uh, and hear from you soon. Branko Malic of Kalicidin signing out.